Hello guys, so today I'm gonna read you the full description of a flamboyant gamine body type from David Kibbe's book Metamorphosis of the 80s. Note, the following information should be taken as a broad outline of what makes a flamboyant gamine. It is the overall combination of opposites, yin and yang, plus some extra yang on the yin-yang scale. Smallish, broadly angular physicality, along with a youthfully bold and brassy essence. That creates this image identity category. Therefore, a slight deviation here or there is always possible and should not be worried over if it does not upset your yin-yang balance. Height. Normally, 5 feet 6 inches and under. Bone structure. Broadly angular. Square shoulders. Slightly wide bones. Large hands and feet in proportion to height. If very petite, hands and feet tend to be short but wide and square. Arms and legs may be long in proportion to height. If very petite, they appear to be slightly squarish. Slightly sharp or broad facial contours, nose, jawline, cheekbones. Body type, very defined musculature unless overweight, lean and strong. Straight lines, flat bust line and hips unless overweight. Tendency toward a leggy look, cultish. Facial features usually have extremely large eyes, usually have a broad or long facial shape, may be very round or slightly oblong. Facial flesh tends to be taut unless overweight. Lips are frequently moderate to full. Hair. Any type of hair is possible, but texture tends to be extreme, either very fine and straight or very thick and wavy curly. Coloring. Any type of coloring is possible, warm or cool, but flamboyant gamines tend to be distinctive, very fair, very fiery or very vivid. If overweight, body tends to become stocky and square. Excess weight usually collects from the waist down, rarely above. Arms and legs tend to become thick, as does the waist and hip area. Face may become very puffy and flashy. A flamboyant gamine will normally not be tall, have extremely exotic facial characteristics except for extremely large eyes, have a delicate bone structure with small hands and feet in proportion to height, have an hourglass figure with a waspish waist and curvy hips and bust line. Even when overweight, the bone structure gives a more squarish shape. Be symmetrical in body type or facial features. Your position on the yin-yang scale is combination of opposites plus extra yang. Physically, you are yang in shape, angular. Yin in size, your height. Both sides are important, but yang is dominant. Initially, you are yang in energy, aggressive and dynamic. Yin in youthfulness, fresh. Here again, both sides are important, but yang is dominant. Always remember, you are a gamin first and foremost. Your dramatic undercurrent should always be used in small doses to add a dash of extra zip to your appearance. It is not a substitution, it is an addition in order to express that extra bit of yang that dominates your being. To express your combination plus extra yang total essence, we want to develop an appearance that could best be described as sassy chic. The underlining theme for your appearance is rules were made to be broken. The cardinal guideline for you is completely and totally discard everything you've read or been taught that restricts you because you are too short. You are not short, you are merely not tall. There is an enormous difference, my friend. Also, your spirit is most definitely larger than life, and it will trip you up royally if you ignore it by wearing one long line of verticals or any other such nonsense designed to perpetuate gamine fashion slavery. It's easier for manufacturers to pretend that women under 5 feet 5 inches simply don't exist. Otherwise, they might have to change their outdated size formulas and admit that real people aren't built like runway models. Your overall silhouette is composed of yang shapes, very angular and geometric, straight lines with sharp edges. Your important yin secondary characteristics are expressed by working with broken and staccato lines and detail. Furthermore, you express your inner combination of opposites, your yin-yang balance, by wearing separate pieces of clothing, top and bottom, that are opposite in either shape or line. For example, a long boxy jacket would be worn with a short and straight skirt, as opposed to a long flowing skirt. On the other hand, a cropped bolero, again cut to the boxy side, might be worn with a long pencil sleep skirt, with a slit up the back that flares out ever so slightly at the hemline. Just remember always to keep a foundation of clothing sculpted in an extremely close-fitting, body-skimming fashion. On top of this base, you will add irregular or asymmetrically shaped separates and accessories. Shape. 
asymmetrics and irregular shapes, short and wide geometrics with sharp or soft edges, chunky boxy shapes, sculpted shapes. Note, a mixture of opposite types of shapes works well for you. It provides electricity in your appearance. Always work with a narrow base and add an opposite shape for contrast. You might not look as good in delicate intricate shapes, in symmetrical even shapes, in ornate shapes unless they are very irregular and witty. Line and silhouette, broken staccato silhouettes, broken boxy outlines, sharply outlined edges, severely straight lines or softly straight lines. Draped or flowing lines may be used when they are very elongated on the body and worn with a separate, either on top or bottom. That is opposite, sharp. That breaks the vertical. Note. An opposite use of line works best for you. Make your foundation from skinny, narrow and clingy silhouette. On top of this, add irregular or asymmetric lines in a staccato, broken fashion. You might not look as good in all unbroken silhouettes, in shapeless silhouettes, in intricate, delicate and ornate lines, in overly draped, flowing lines, in symmetrical outlines. Detail. Use a profusion of angular sculpted detail that is ultra colorful and irregular or asymmetrical. This is the area that showcases your intelligence, your sophistication and your wit. Shoulders are better defined. You may go for an extended sharp shoulder or a very streamlined rounded shoulder, but sculpted, not gathered. Necklines should be geometric, asymmetric or irregular. They may be very high and sculpted, mandarin, Naru, turtleneck, or low and plunging. Keep them cleanly shaped, without ornateness. Body's details should be sharp-edged, pleats, plackets, epaulets, etc. And is best kept slightly oversized as opposed to small. Asymmetric detail is best. Contrasting trim is excellent. Collars, cuffs, piping, buttons, etc. As long as it is bold, not delicate. Labels should be sharp and defined wide and notched, or clean and sculpted, but not delicate and fussy. The waist should be slightly dropped or slightly bloused over. It may be eliminated in very clingy, skinny styles that reveal the shape of the body underneath. Dropped waist trim, sashes, ropes, bold detail, etc. is always stunning as long as it is asymmetric and not overly fussy or flouncy. Pleats are rarely effective and should be kept low and stitched down. Hemlines can be any length depending on the top. The skirt is always opposite the top in style. Although shorter is most effective. You might not look as good in symmetrical plain detail, in overly intricate ornate or fussy detail, in wide unconstructed detail, in elongated detail that is not broken up, in minimal detail. Alright, that's it. Subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for full recommendations for each piece of the wardrobe of Flamboyant Gamin. See you soon. Bye.